movie takes place in another time, in another place, with unbelievable visual and special effects. The Matrix is a science fiction film, but it's also an action adventure film. You see things that are fantastic. And you say, well, wait a second, that's impossible. Freeze it. When they explained to me the kind of movie that they were trying to make, I got really fired up about it because nobody's made this kind of movie before. Synthesizing evolution, acting in the construct, giving flesh to a cartoon, soul to a machine. The movie takes place somewhere in the distant future. It is a time when computers rule the world. Real, but actually they're not. They're living inside a computer program. And there are a number of other people within that who are trying to liberate those people from their um, captivities. It's about the idea we take everything for granted. And then other times it feels like it's about hope and love and, and belief. It's about robots versus kung fu. And there's some crazy action. <laughs> I never seen nothing quite like it. What unemployed actor wouldn't want five months in Australia? Uh -huh. Nice, so that's better. Filming on a location in Sydney is actually a pleasure. We're in a great city that's got a lot, of, a lot to offer and a very uh, professional crew. Well, here we are in, in Sydney in a beautiful new facility. This stage is literally brand new. We're the first movie in the stage. And we moved in here to build these sets. The paint was wet on the walls. I mean, it literally, do not touch the walls, they're wet. Is it okay if I kind of come forward? Like, like, uh, it's always a difficult thing to ask anybody where do you get your ideas from? Nobody knows. They just sort of happen. A friend of ours asked us to come up with a concept for a comic book. We like, you know, John Woo Kate movies Dick and books that are, you know, science fiction that is about the sort of nature of reality. And it's, a, it's a great way to create a sense of alienation and disconnection and alternate worlds being caught in sort of these quasi-dream, quasi-conscious states. Or do you want me up like this? That's the one, that's the look. I, I first met Larry and Andy when I read uh, Assassin, and it really was an incredible script. It was a very dark, edgy piece of material, and I really was impressed with that style. And They showed me this animated uh, Japanese to actually see that animation come to life, and believe me, essentially it has. We've had our eye on you for some time. I'm now, Mr. Anderson. In one life, you're Thomas A. Anderson, program writer for a respectable software company. The other life is lived in computers, where you go by the hacker alias Neo and are guilty of virtually every computer crime we have a law for. I play uh, a man named Thomas Anderson. He's looking for a man named Morpheus who's played by Lawrence Fishburne. I'm searching for the answer to a question. The question is, what is the Matrix? Um, my character feels that the answer to this question will somehow make sense of his life. My character is called Morpheus. And uh, Morpheus is a person who lives in the real world. And he's the leader of this band of people looking for the one you felt it your entire life that there's something wrong with the world you don't know what it is but it's there like a splinter in your mind 
He is this like fevered missionary guy. He's like he's a zealot. We think there's something dangerous about people who believe they have the truth and they they do sort of act blindly. This is rare. Tank, I need a pilot program for a B-212 helicopter. She's a warrior, yet I don't think that she's lost being a woman. Son of Agent Smith is the law enforcement, and he's a seemingly invincible machine who develops these wonderful human frailties. There was an accident. Goddamn car accident. Cypher was a disciple, a strong disciple of Morpheus, but now I've had second thoughts. So you're here to save the world. Speaking about Larry and Andy together as a pair, as a team of writers, I liken them to the Brothers Grimm. I have to imagine that that's what the Brothers Grimm were like. Oh, God! Somebody's gonna be here. He's gonna die. They work very well together. They've got a wonderful sense of humor. So you do get a you do get a, a dialogue happening that is normally just within the one director's head. So it's normally one director talking to themselves, working out a problem and then expressing their solution to that problem. Whereas with Larry and Andy, you'll see, you'll see the dialogue going on. Just like real guys, and there's none of that, that kind of Hollywood thing is not evident at all. You know, they're from Chicago, you know? They wear shorts, they wear baseball hats, they, they watch basketball games, they love movies, they love, you know, they get so excited. There's nothing greater than doing a scene for them and then get, and for them to get excited. One day, hey! One day I will Sam. no longer just be a Sam. computer nerd. Sam. I will be a superhero! They seek and search for clarity. They're very thoughtful, and yet they're, they're very, um, they have a wonderful sense of humor. It's really, you know, unusual that directors are so sure of what they want. They write the script, they know exactly what they want, they know exactly what angle they want to see it at, what the actor should say, how he should turn, when he takes the breath in his speech, I mean, they know it exactly. had storyboards of fight sequences that they they wanted to see certain you know punches and kicks and flips that they wanted to see I see some of the framing of you know Frank Miller there are some Japanese angles and perspectives in it dodge this they worked with people that they knew from the comic book world and designed these fantastic things we went into the first Warner Brothers story meeting and uh, they, they said, okay, now we know we've bought something cool. We don't know what it is. Could you just take us through it once? <laughs> so they helped translate the movie for us. Nobody really understood the level of the action that we wanted in the action sequences. And then when we'd show the storyboards, people would go, oh, geez. The scale that you can pull off the comics is just always fantastic. You can freeze a moment and make an image that sort of sustains. There's something film. Kung Fu is great on film. Now, I'm supposed to start with these operation programs first. That's Major Butler. Shed. Jitsu. I'm going to learn Jiu Jitsu. And 
did the action differently. And one of the things that we love about Hong Kong action is the way that they shoot fight scenes with long takes and wider angles. But they also do this wire work, which is it's very fluid, and people you know fly around and jump incredibly. It's very balletic, and everybody has a superhuman and supernatural grace. We wanted to. Don't think you don't have to go up so high like you're reaching for more out. This looks better. Yeah. When I first became involved, Larry and Andy were a little frustrated because their dream was to work with this guy that had done Fist of Legend. And through contacts in Hong Kong, we tracked the guy down. Turned out to be Wu Ping. Wu Ping rocks. Uh, one of the best. We love his movies. We've been watching them for years. I think it's a good for Lawrence. Whoosh, whoosh. What's that, Beijing? He said, I really don't know how they got my number and about me. All that he knew is he was, in Hong, he was in Beijing making a movie and got a call from Hong Kong saying that the two brothers were really interested in talking to him. He said, I'm very busy, I don't have the time. And then the call came again. He read the script and he thought that script was a very brilliant script. So he decided that he should do it. One of the incredible experiences on this movie, and unlike any other movie I've done, is that uh, our four leads spent uh, three or four months training with Wu Ping and his uh, Hong Kong stunt team. The, you know, these aren't athletes, they're actors. You know, when you want someone to paint your house, you hire a painter, not an actor who makes believe he's a painter. And they really had to learn a fighting style that they never had learned before. It was a tremendous hardship, but it is evident on the film when you see it that that's Lawrence and that's Carrie Ann and that is Keanu in those scenes doing that stuff, and it's, it's astounding. We started training in October of 97 trained all the way through till March of 98. That was on like an everyday basis. One, two, three. <laughs> Ready, stay. It was a very involving, exhausting uh, process, which I, I initially thought we were going to be um, doing Kung Fu for maybe four or five weeks, something like that. And it ended up being months and months of training. The interesting thing is in the, the challenge, and the challenge is how we can make these people look as though they know they are born with the skills. We all sort of have our own person that is sort of our teacher, and my teacher's name is Ma Dai. He really held my hand in the beginning and was very hard on me at the same time. Chu is Keanu's main guy, and Chu doesn't speak any English. Then we have Dion, who oversees all of us, and he speaks better English than the rest of the guys. And he sort of our go-between Wu Ping and, and us. We, we, we've had uh, various movie kung fu dojos in Los Angeles and in Australia, and at lunch we'd sit there with our legs, you know, trying to open the rusty gates and stretch and watch kung fu movies and see what was good and bad. And I really didn't know if I would be able to do what they were asking me to do. I was going every day and getting on the wires and and being lifted up just to get the feeling of being lifted up on the wire and then, you know, practicing sort of getting up the wall and then having the wall padded and then going along the padded wall and then them taking the pad off and me being terrified. Like, you could, I couldn't do the wire that day, the day they took the pads off the wall because I was so afraid. He's very inventive and organic, the way he works, and, and uh, you know, you must have your own style, but you also have to have, you know, and, uh, you know, good kung fu. Initially, I think Wu Ping and the, and the wire team, they took us on and, and thought we were useless, which we were, hopeless at Kung Fu, and uh, 
but they slowly realised after a couple of weeks that maybe we were going to be able to get to a level where we'd be halfway decent. <laughs> you very rarely get an opportunity to do something like this. I mean, I feel incredibly blessed to have uh, worked with Wu Ping and his team. Okay, so what do you need? Guns. Lots of guns. A rubber handgun. Just so when I go over the nomenclature and what the weapons parts are, you guys understand what they are. You can physically have something. And these are 100% safe. Turn! Kill! Everybody pick up your weapon and hold it with two hands and put it out in front of you. Almost everybody has a great position. He tried to, you know, not do guns the way they're always done. Just a couple rounds. Now the guns are supposed to be at each other's. What are we doing? Directors! Yes! <laughs> the sets on the picture all originated from the visual design of the film that Larry and Andy achieved in, in storyboarding the film. They were executed by and, and built and designed by Owen Patterson, who's our production designer. You know, this film is sort of full of many, many details. An art department is trying to create an environment which is really just an illusion. The Bremer! And we're trying to use like contemporary technology in a sort of slightly retro fashion. It's something that looks a little bit different to your archetype sort of spaceship. We've sort of fallen back a great deal onto uh, and utilised this. Larry and Andy wanted us to do uh, a lot of Jeff Darrow's drawings, which were the original conceptual thing. But we're trying to sort of promote that idea of a reality that isn't real. You'll look at it and go, oh, that's a real place, but it's, there are these illusions sort of within it. I think they're some of the most beautiful and spectacular stunt stuff we, I've ever been involved with. Um, registered trademark. Enter the Gata. The Gata Force. Let's get the wind cue right. Yeah. No one's around. He's around. around. He's around. He's around. <laughs> you might want to spin around and face the subject at hand. In this particular rig, there are 120 cameras and two motion picture cameras set up. A bullet time is something that was conceived for the Matrix specifically, uh, but I think it's the byproduct of the directors observing technology and then they ask the right question at the right time. That's the that's the money cam at the end, that last one where the bullet is basically gonna come over your head. I could shoot the same exact stunt several times over. I can also do things like I can go forwards in time, but then I could also choose to stop the camera abruptly, start moving backwards against itself while the action continues to move forward. I can create a three-dimensional construction of the object. Everything begins with a simulation and uh, all the math for how to shoot it works backwards from there. These guys have a lot of specific notions about the worlds that they're, they're creating. And they're, they're pretty over the top in terms of what they want. You're allowed to do things, break the rules that you wouldn't normally do. We're, we're changing speeds left, right and centre. We're going to slow motion to high speed, jump cutting, crossing the line. Everything's going in there. To achieve what seems like a fairly simple thing to do, to fly a helicopter down the front of a building, shoot a window out and rescue someone by jumping out the window, it seems, as we'll see it in the film, a seamless object. It's, it, but in fact, it's been shot in two different buildings. It's been shot on a big set. I think 
it's such a rare experience for a group of actors in film, maybe in theater, but in film to have been working together, we'll almost have been working together for a year by the end of this. So it's been, it, it's, it's great kind of a melding of, of heart and soul and spirit and action. And working in a film of this magnitude has been an enormous eye-opener for me. It's kind of chased away a few demons for me and, and um, it's educated me a little bit more. And, and just working on a film with this sort of budget and on this sort of scale has been a great experience. And I really think that this is the first film of the next century, the next of the millennia, the year Y2K, or they're calling it. It is monumental. I think it is, it's, it's groundbreaking. I think it's something people have never seen before and it's going to take people's breath away. And I think that, you know, there are going to be a lot of films that are going to kind of be disciples of this movie. And I think Andy and Larry are going to start a new visual style that, you know, will be very, you know, well known and well remembered.